you want to go with the, the stocks with the biggest average true ranges. You want to look at the Amazons. You want to look at the NVIDIAs of the world. You want to look. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is having uh, a great weekend. Uh, crazy action uh, in the market. We'll get to the uh, individual details uh, in a second. First and foremost, I, I, I want to... I'm not a big news guy. I don't watch the news. It's so damn depressing. But I, you know, you saw it kind of last night. Everybody just start, started talking about um, you know prayers to all the people in, in, in Buffalo, New York, man. Um, if you guys haven't seen the news, some crazy shooting. With, I think it was a supermarket or something. Just just craziness in the world. So as much as you think you know you could have a bad day, losing a couple of bucks or whatever the case may be, uh, just always think about the end result could be much worse. So uh, obviously our hearts and prayers. Uh, go out to the families and the victims uh, of that just just ridiculous uh, and, and heinous crime. So uh, always, uh, guys, always remember, it, it's just just learn to smile. Life is just is so much easier when you smile. You don't know how long you have. There is no mulligans in this life. Uh, and just always, uh, you know, take take treasure in, in every second that you have uh, with your eyes open. So again, big con condolences to all the families uh, affected. So let's talk about the market. Um, Again, obviously still sell biased, right? The overall picture, don't freak out. I'm about to say something um, might be pretty good, right? So we've been underneath the 50 day moving average for a while now, right? So it's been about it's been about a month now. Um, and you, you kind of see the same formula play out. You have four days out of the week, uh, extreme selling. You have one day that the market goes up and then all of a sudden everybody's screaming it's a generational bottom. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but so far, uh, it's proven it's not. And I think uh, no matter uh, what your stance is in this market, whether you're a long-term investor, uh, short-term trader, scalper, whatever the case may be, you could all agree everybody has eyes uh, and you kind of can't be in denial uh, of where we are. And, and again, you could just see, uh, you know, just, just from the evidence alone, you don't even need to go back through here, right? You don't need to go back to the first time we broke it. Uh, you could just go back in the last months. So you see it. I mean, you have, you, have, you have the majority of the days, you have red days and you have big spikes reversals that come out of nowhere and then you know two days later they reverse they start taking out lows and they start dying and that's kind of what we saw uh for the whole duration of this four months in the 50-day moving average below the 50-day moving average but the one thing is again we're not trying to figure out when this bear mar market is going to end okay for us especially uh for, for all of us who trade channels and trade pivots we're trading both sides of the market it doesn't make a difference one you're i'm basically preparing for the next day okay i don't know what's going to happen the day after i don't know what's going to happen the week after uh, I'm, I'm not in the predicting business i'm not in the guessing business i'm in the data business and that's what it is uh, we're trying to get as much data as possible so we can take advantage of the next day because again channels are areas where stocks will trade until they come out whether it's to the short side or whether to the long side so i don't know where we're going to be uh, a week from now hell i don't know where we're going to be there um, by monday at the close but what, all we can do is look the data from the previous day look at our research and the one thing that if you if you number one looked at the scoreboard this week you could kind of tell a very violent picture okay we had we finally had our reversal on Friday, okay, the Nasdaq was up four percent. That's a huge number the market put up, okay. But when you look at the the to totality, okay, of the week, despite the Nasdaq putting up a four percent gain on Friday, the Nasdaq was still down three percent for the week. That's pretty. A, that's it's it's a monumental number considering how big the rally was on Friday, and that's what bear markets are, okay. We don't know if this bear market will last. Uh, another couple of days, we won't know it's going to last another couple of months, a couple of weeks, or even even a couple of years. Again, there are bear markets I've traded for that, that lasted for two, three years. So we don't know. But what we can do is prepare for the next day. And when you look at Friday's rally, it did something that if you if you break down the charts, and again, we're all about charts, it's not about opinion. It's not about where we want it to be. I would love to see a rabid bull market go back to 2021, to 1918, 17, uh, 2016, and 2015, right? The market was screaming for the last seven years. 
I love a bull market because again, it's it's a lot less seamless. You could be, you don't have to be perfect on your entry. You don't have to be perfect on your sentiment. You can buy dips. You could do all that stuff that everybody was uh, driven down their throats that you can do in a bull market because they're right. It's linear. There's a range. But when you're trading in a bear market, you have to be a lot more calculated. You have to be a lot more respectful for price action, both long and short. And it's very, very dangerous to have a bias in that direction because again, if you have a bias in one direction and you want the, the, the market to react in your way, versus the reality of what's happening, you can get run over and you can be, you know, really, you know, discarded very, very quickly, like last night's garbage. And when you see what happened this week, right? Again, before Friday, we were down 7% on the NASDAQ. You saw a, a, a monster collateral damage in all the speculation asset classes. You started seeing, and again, I'm not an expert in crypto or NFTs or anything, or I'm not involved with these damn things. Uh, but you see like big NFT projects, and again, this is just things I'm hearing, you know, they got cut, right? They got cut, I don't know if in half or whatever the case may be, they got cut. You saw crypto names getting hurt. You saw Bitcoin uh, testing, what, 25, 26,000 uh, midweek, right? You saw that Luna, right? I, again, I don't, I'm not a, I don't know anything about it, but you saw Luna go to zero, like literally go to zero. And, and, and again, that's what's called uh, asset, uh, asset flushing. You know, when anything you have with speculation, it trickles into everything else. And that's a very, very important part. So not only are, are people exposed to the stock market weakness, they're exposed to the metaverse, they're exposed to crypto, they're exposed to the Bitcoin and everything in between. And nothing gets, you know, nothing gets spared when you have a flush in speculation assets. Remember, it's speculation. That's the whole point. At least when you own a piece of real estate, and again, I'm not going into a whole big conversation, real estate versus the stock market, but when you own a piece of real estate, it's tangible, whether you're upside down or upright in your loan, or maybe you you own it uh, cash outright. The point is, it's a tangible asset. You could hold it. When you have a fluctuation asset, no matter what it is, uh, you're going to have a lot of volatility. And again, the one thing we always talk about there's a main, there's a huge difference between an average true range and volatility. When we trade beta, the Teslas, Amazon, Facebooks, Apples. Uh, Netflix and the videos of the world, they're average true range because they have a big range throughout the day. Uh, what a lot of people are calling volatility, that's bad, okay? No trader wants volatility because you, you can't be in any type of conviction in volatility because things are completely, completely outrageous in nature. Things are moving when they shouldn't be moving, they're expanding when they should be contracting and vice versa, so you don't have any control. And you know, going into this week, the, the one thing that, you know, if you look at your charts, you'll notice, you know, you'll notice something very, very important, okay? Uh, because we had a big 4% rally in the NASDAQ, the thing that happened that stood out when you're looking at your charts is the NASDAQ, the Qs, we'll talk about the Qs as the NASDAQ, the Qs reclaimed the five-day moving average. Now, why is that important? Uh, if you've watched this video for uh, many years and many months and many weeks, you know the importance, at least for me, uh, the importance of the five-day moving average. It at least represents short-term control, right? When I mean short-term, it could be literally as, as one day, two days, but it does show you who has control of the shortest term sentiment. And if you look at the, if you go kind of go on a, a history lesson, even in this bear market, what happened the last several times, there was room above the five day moving average. We had a couple of days of rallying, right? So let, let's, let me show you what I'm talking about, right? So let's start out with right here. Just wanna go on a quick history lesson. So the orange line represents the five day moving average. You see every single time it hit the five day, rejected, 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 rejected. And then finally here, it reclaimed the five day moving average. Everybody see that guys, right? And the result was again, bulls took over a short term sentiment. Doesn't mean that was a generational bottom. And what happened was they had a nice couple of day rally into the next supply, okay? And then they get back, gagged down again. Now look again, what happens, right? Again, rejected off the five, 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 rejected, 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 rejected. Look what happened here, right? That big reversal candle, that was the candle on uh, the day that Russia officially uh, invaded the Ukraine and look what happened. We had a multi-day rally and look what happened once we fell below the five-day moving average again. Again, you see it? Rejected, 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 rejected. And finally here we got above 
the five-day moving average and had a really, really big run. And the five-day moving average, instead of becoming supply, became demand. And every single time it hit the five-day, it bounced, 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 until it lost the five-day moving average again. And guess what happened? We started moving lower, 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 lower. And here we reclaimed the five-day moving average and had another little bit of run. And then went lower, 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 lower. And guess where we are here, right? We reclaim the five-day moving average. So sometimes when, you know, when, when traders are talking about price action and you know, they start putting in these really advanced metrics and advanced uh, studies on their charts, uh, sometimes, even if you're the most novice investor, sometimes you, you can use your eyes, right? And this is what we talk about backtesting. You, know, you don't need to have uh, really, really aggressive and advanced analytics to backtest. Sometimes what we just did here for, you know, for basically 30 seconds was backtesting what happened when the market in a bear market reclaimed the five-day moving average, right? It had a, at least a day or two, maybe even three uh, day run. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. We reclaimed the five-day moving average. And if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, right? So here is the supply we reclaimed. The next supply on the queues is 307. Now we closed on the queues at 302. So we have five points, at least five points for our next measured potential for the next supply. Five points on the queues is enough. Again, we're going day by day. We're not going you know, month by month, week by week. Again, there's no predictions. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I'm the king of the idiots. I have no idea wh where the market's going to be at the close tomorrow. I have no idea. I don't even want to guess. But with all the data that we're collecting, with all the charts that we're looking at, and based on what we're seeing here, and just going by the back test of what we've seen in a very, very uh, short compilation of data, you can see there is a, a pretty good probability that if, if, and again, this is a very, very big if, remember, we're still in the bear market, but if we can reclaim Friday's highs on the queues, then we can get a test of the 10-day moving average. And again, let's let's not do the whole, well, if we get rid of above that, we'll go here, we'll get above that, we go to the 50-day, we get above 50-day risk on. Again, baby steps, right? If, if you're a bull in this market, what you saw on Friday is baby steps. Let's not put the cart in front of the horse and start you know, pounding our chest. This is the generational bottom. We don't know that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but we don't know that. So we're again, basing our opinion based on the closing prices and what we see in front of us. And the one thing you know, going into tomorrow, usually there's something very, you know, we always joke around and say, well, the market's either gonna go up tomorrow or it's gonna go down. And that's true, right? Every, every single day that's the case, but tomorrow is very important. It's incre incredibly important because again, what happens? What happens if we give up the five-day moving average very, very quickly and we close below the five-day moving average? Well, guess what? We're gonna go right back down. So yeah, I think tomorrow's a pretty big day. Um, I think when you have a window like this, especially uh, five points in the queues, um, you don't, you know, you don't wanna, I always talk about this, you don't wanna get creative, right? You always wanna be in the stocks that potentially could give you the biggest average trade move because again, you have such a small window uh, because we're still in a bear market. So as much as you, you know, you like, uh, for example, a lucid, all right, cool. Uh, or you like, for example, you know, something, you know, something that's, you know, gonna trade in a 50 cent range, like a Snapchat or, uh, you know, you know, something like that, right? Snapchat or anything, right? You wanna go with the, the stocks with the biggest average true ranges. You wanna look at the Amazons. You wanna look at the NVIDIAs of the world. You wanna look uh, at the Teslas of the world. You wanna look uh, at the Facebooks of the world and the Netflix of the world and all that because those are the stocks that, again, no, you know, no, no disrespect to Lucid's or Snapchat or, or anything else, trading in a 50 cent ch channel for six hours, but these stocks can give you 10, 15, 20, 30. In the case of Amazon, it can give you 100 points in the day. And when you have such a small window, you wanna take a shot at that window and make sure you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. So, you know, this week's research for me, this weekend's research for, for me was pretty, pretty easy because I'm going with the names, right? If they confirm, I'm going with the names that potentially could have the biggest runs, right? Look at the video, right? And the video closed above the five day. There's another four or five points minimum, right? To the supply. And if it starts reclaiming supply, then there's another 10 points above that. Uh, a name like Tesla, right? Which is obviously my favorite stock, both long and short. It reclaimed the five day. Now look what happens. If this, if Tesla could confirm the 10 day, the five day moving average on Monday, and again, that's a very big if, you're talking about 70 points 
to the upside. And that's kind of my point. So instead of trading like a Snapchat and going, oh my God, I hope it goes up 50 cents, you got 60 points, right? You got 60 points in, in potential, measure potential in Tesla. Uh, Amazon, if it confirms, right? You have another 60 points here. And if it closes above the 10 day moving average, then you got another 150 points here. So sometimes, yes, you wanna look at the best charts and every chart is gonna look the same. If you did your homework, uh, this weekend, everything is either got rejected off the five day moving average that needs to confirm or above the five day moving average that needs to confirm to go to the 10 day moving average. So no matter if you're looking at a TTD, right, that closed on the 10 day moving average to get to the 20 or you're looking at a Tesla that confirmed the well got above the five day that could get to the 10. Everything is going to mirror the Nasdaq 100. So when you're doing your research th th this weekend, Try to stick to the ones, and I understand everybody's a different account size, experience level. I get it. If you have a two thousand dollar account, it's very, very tough, you know, to look at an Amazon. But if you have a you know good, decent size account, and you are and you do trade beta, and I know a lot of you guys uh, out there love trading technology names, you want to go with those names because if again, if we do only have a one or two day bounce, you want your stock to go up forty points not 40 cents, right guys? And that's it, that's kind of a quick little lesson. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more, dis you, sometimes you have to be a little more speculative in your analytics when you're doing your research, but sometimes it's so basic out there that if we do confirm, and again, we don't know if they will confirm Friday's price action, but if we do confirm, you wanna be with, with the leaders, you wanna be in the ones that are gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck, and the most important part is you wanna be in the ones that have the cult following with the option flow, because if institutional money starts betting in these stocks right at the open, you know there's a high probability that they will get where they need to go. If we close below the five-day moving average on Monday, guess what? We're having a completely different narrative on Monday evening. Guys, have a great night. Have a blessed, blessed Sunday. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take